Hello there. In my day job, I create control software for active suspension systems. And with this channel, I aim to demystify racetrack setup, whether that's for sim racing or any other form of motorsport. I thought I would do a video on why it's easier to lose control in racing sims than in real life, because I've seen a few videos on this topic, but none of them have really addressed it properly. So here we have a video of Daniel Ricciardo. So why is that? So first of all, let's discuss why um, driving at the limit is difficult in the first place. So to drive at the limit, the driver needs to have a good sense of the vehicle motion using their inner ear balance organs. Uh, they need to have a good judgment of the speed using their eyes. They need to have a good feel for the slip angle evolution. Uh, so that's the slip angle at the tires from the sensory feedback in the hands uh, on the steering wheel and they need to be able to update their say internal model uh, of the vehicle state uh, as well as the tire state and so they can do this from years of experience and by doing this they, they can predict how fast they can enter each corner because if you think about it say in qualifying they have uh, tires which have more grip uh, than they otherwise would the the vehicle is at the uh, lightest it's ever been, uh, but then the very best drivers are able to is extract lap times which they never set at any time other than uh, qualifying. Elite racing drivers also have very well trained muscle memory uh, to deal with any oversteer, so they can uh, for them to counter steer they don't even have to think about it. It's it's just second nature uh, that is there through having driven um, all kinds of racing cars from a very young age. So, but the important point is this muscle memory uh, of dealing with oversteer uh, or understeer comes from um, the information that is fed by the inner ear balance organs. So the inner ear balance organs will tell the, tell the driver that there is some um, yaw rotation going on. Uh, it is maybe more or less than what the driver intended and so the driver is able to make uh, make an adjustment. So uh, due to all of the above, each driver's abilities and preferences are also a little bit different, uh, which is why car setups need to be different. And for sim racing, the uh, this is further complicated by the fact that each person most likely has different sim racing equipment, whether that's different um, screen setups or uh, sim racing wheels and pedals, uh, all, th and that's even without um, going into you know setting up the uh, software differently for the for for the same equipment. So you might have different hardware, and even with the ha same hardware, you can change the force feedback settings, uh, the amount, the the wheel rotation angles, and so on. In order to drive at the high at a high level, the the driver needs. Uh, everything is controlled by the brain but the brain has the uh, eyes as the visual sensors and importantly when you're driving a real car you have uh, you have 3d vision so with the 3d vision having both eyes in the front you can you can judge the speed properly and uh, no matter how good your screen setup is uh, the the image you get is is 2d so it's a 2d representation of a 3d world and then you have to somehow um, try to guess or estimate the driving speed from that 2D image. Um, so of course if you use VR goggles then uh, the situation improves but for the vast majority of sim racers out there what they see are a uh, 2D representation of a 3D world. So next uh, is the important uh, inner ear organ as mentioned. So these are like little snail-like uh, structures in the in inner ear which help you with your balance and are able to detect the rotational motion as well. And this is actually also the organ which causes um, motion sickness. So when people have a 
mismatch in what this inner ear organ, inner ear balance organ is telling their brain in terms of the body motion and uh, the what the eyes are telling the brain. So if there's a mismatch in this information, then the brain says, well, I've been poisoned perhaps and I need to be sick. So then you, you get nauseous and you, you barf up uh, whatever is in the in the stomach that uh, the brain thinks is making it, uh, it, it sick. So it's a natural reflex to protect the body uh, that's been there from since we were, we were monkeys. Um, so next, the brain also gets input from the, from the, from the steering wheel regarding the, the tire forces. Um, so this is actually one of the areas where, in, where sim racing is actually getting much closer to reality than, than the other areas. Because with, um, uh, with the force feedback racing wheels, which exist nowadays, and especially, you say, with uh, direct drive and so on, um, these steering wheels are able to generate feedback forces in high fidelity uh, and to high frequencies that uh, you get quite a good idea what is happening at the tires. But even so, the, the quality of the feedback is still probably not on the level of a real steering wheel in a real vehicle even if uh, real vehicles uh, have worse steering feel nowadays than, than previously due to moving from hydraulic steering racks to el electric steering racks. Another obvious uh, sensory information which is missing uh, for the brain when doing sim racing are the uh, g-forces acting on the body. Um, so when when you're driving a real car you feel the forces in in your body and so you have a very good idea of what is happening to the car in terms of uh, say the uh, the roll angle the pitch angle uh, this is all missing uh, there are sim racing rigs where they tilt the body um, so so that, so that can help uh, but where they can still not match reality due to the fact that the um, the motion um, the space in which in which the sim racing rig is able to move is limited. So you will never manage to generate exactly the same forces as in a real uh, vehicle, which is able to move freely uh, three-dimensionally in the real world. So an example of this is, for example, the, the feedback from the, the, ba uh, the, the seat, uh, the racing seat, to the driver's back, which helps tell the driver what is happening at the rear axle. So if you're sitting in an armchair, in front of a in front of computer monitor uh, driving a racing sim, you're never going to get this information. Um, the same for pedal feel. So uh, we know that uh, managing load transfer between the front and rear axles is a crucial aspect for the driver to influence the oversteer understeer uh, vehicle balance. But uh, in order to do this effectively, the driver really needs a very fine control of the um, both the throttle and the uh, brake pedal, and especially the brake pedal because the the brake the brake forces are typically higher than acceleration forces, and especially um, the the speed through a corner is mostly determined at the corner entry. So if uh, and, and that's where the driver has such a big influence on the performance of the vehicle using the using the brake pedal. So the brake pedal feel is really important for the racing driver to be able to um, effectively maximize the uh, vehicle performance at corner entry. But the issue with sim racing is that um, typically uh, mo most of the pedals out there they they increase the uh, brake effort through travel and um, that's not how real cars work. Real cars work on pressure rather than um, rather than brake travel. Uh, so when when drivers apply braking uh, braking effort they, they, they're not thinking about well how, how far have I pressed it. The, the brain is interpreting okay I'm pressing this hard so that's the amount of retardation I expect. So this is an area where it gets better with, uh, say, more expensive pedal sets, which use load cells uh, as the as a sen as a sensor rather than a potentiometer, which relies on the travel. Uh, but even so, the um, 
the pedal feel is uh, most likely not going to be on the level of uh, a real uh, vehicle because say with a real vehicle if the ABS comes on then there's also that feedback through the uh, through the pedal so it's not just one way uh, driver providing the input into the pedal there's also the the feedback information from the pedal towards the driver uh, as to what is happening so if we look at sim racing um, first of all you lose a 3d vision uh, you lose the inner ear balance organs which is really crucial for the muscle memory in doing uh, counter steer for example then you don't have the uh, information in the in the back of the seat and your brake pedal is uh, yeah is not providing the same feedback as a real brake pedal uh, there's also an additional element which is the tire modeling and I guess yeah all of vehicle modeling but it's um, so Overall, um, a racing sim is basically a mathematical representation of a real vehicle. Certain simplifications have to be made, uh, otherwise the the vehicle, yeah, the sim ra the racing sim will never run uh, fast enough um, because real world uh, physics is just so complicated. Everything is non-linear. The the um, if you try to model it all, it, it just wouldn't run uh, in real time. So certain simplifications have to be made and in this video I will focus purely on the tire model uh, aspect because the tire characteristic that is actually very uh, crucial to how um, the driver will feel their vehicle. So if we look at a typical um, tire slip angle versus lateral tire force curve what is shown now is a street tire. You have a slip angle uh, of say five degrees uh, at which the lateral tire force reaches a peak. So you have the linear region, uh, you have then the transitional region uh, where you reach the peak um, lateral tire force, and then you have a sliding region um, beyond the peak lateral tire force. Uh, but important to note is that the um, the sliding region, you do lose tire grip, but it's not too dramatic. So if we compare that to a racing tire, which is also typically what is modeled inside a racing sim, the race tire obviously has a higher uh, lateral tire force limit. However, it reaches this at a lower uh, slip angle. So in the linear region, it has what is called a higher cornering stiffness. So this is good for uh, giving very quick feedback to the driver plus the higher uh, lateral tire force enables the, the vehicle to corner faster but importantly this peak is high uh, but at the low slip angle so it's actually uh, not as easy to feel uh, this limit um, as the street tire and the penalty for exceeding the slip angle at which this uh, peak tire force is reached is also a lot more that uh, is a lot more severe than for the street tire where where the street tire has a nice broad um, peak the racing tire is very peaky and so if you if you mess up then your understeer or oversteer will just be that much more severe and as mentioned uh, because racing sims typically are modeling racing vehicles then the tires are also racing tires which are not so easy to feel uh, so in reality, the the, ra the real racing driver has the uh, rotation information coming from the inner ear organs to help them, um, but in a racing sim, that's that's missing. And the cr and the crucial thing with uh, say oversteer and spinning is that um, if you've ever tried to drift the car uh, or um, or taken a car control course, you will know that um, oversteer in order to control oversteer, uh, catch it in time, the, the, first rea in the, the initial reaction, the initial counter steer really has to come very quickly. Uh, you ha it has to be in time. It's, uh, because the later um, your reaction, the slower your reaction to this um, excessive yaw rotation, the, the bigger your counter steer will need to be. And racing cars, they only have a limited uh, steering lock 
So if you're a fraction too slow, then the, um, the counter steer that you have to apply is much bigger and uh, also the, um, the vehicle reaction rotating in the opposite direction once it catches again is also more severe. So ideally, you want to get the information quickly through the inner ear. Balance organs react quickly on, with, with a very small counter steer and then, and then you can continue on uh, as you were. But then, because in racing sims you only have the 2D representation of the 3D world and uh, you're trying to do, um, work out the, your rotation purely from this 2D image, everything comes to the brain that much slower and so the brain uh, is not able to react as fast with the counter steer and this is why it's much more easy to spin out in racing sims.